Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. I'm Justin. And, and this is week two, June 2019 of the Social Dancers track. At Wednesday Night Hop. At Wednesday Night Hop. So the first thing I want to review is the warm-up that we did at the beginning. So we built on it from last week. Um, so the whole thing looks like this. We go open, open, closed, closed, open and closed, open and closed, open. So it's a pattern, closed, closed, open and closed. And next week we're going to add um, the last piece of it. Just to break down the um, the new part, so if you watch the other video, we talked about the open and the closing. The new piece that we added was this open and closed, open and closed. The tips that I gave were keeping it small and then letting your hips do more of the work than your shoulders. So if you insist on going open and closed with your whole body, it's going to get really hard, especially as the tempo gets up. If instead you keep your shoulders facing mostly the front and you use your hips to go open and closed, open and closed, then you can go to pretty fast tempos and keep the precision that you're looking for. So one more time, the whole thing looks like this. Open, open, closed, closed, open and closed, open and closed. And next week there will be more. Part one. Uh, part the second. Um, <laughs> before we forget. There were a bunch of questions about the music that we overplayed in class. <laughs> so the two songs that we overplayed last week and then this week was Wade in the Water, um, and the second song was Bad Bad Whiskey. And maybe one of you enterprising viewers will put a link to those in the comments <laughs> and you'll get some internet points for that. Internet okay. points. Um, other songs that we have played were um, Jump Session, Apollo Jump, Blues and Hosses Flat. Um, we didn't overplay those, but those are the ones that we, we also used. Oh, and Massachusetts. Um, so blah. we started with an exercise where we played a song that we felt had a um, predictable melody, or at least a repetitive melody. And we asked you to try to step only on the melody. So it was like bad, bad whiskey, right? So we were like bad, bad whiskey, bad. This is the most simplification of this. The song has more going on. I just can't remember it right now. But anyway. Um, if you play a song, it's just stepping on the melody. And the melody might mean something different to me than it does to you. I was, If it has vocals, I usually use those as guidelines. But Justin sometimes hears an instrument, and that's his melody. And so we end up with different um, patterns in our feet. But the idea is just that instead of thinking about dancing in terms of triple steps and step steps and all these pieces that we know, it's thinking about our dancing in terms of what we're hearing and trying to match our footwork to the music. Now that said, kind of like last week, we did a lot of practice with this. This isn't something that you need to do for the entire song, right? If you know Shiny Stocking super well, and you could do this for the entire song, that's cool, maybe a little overkill though. Um, so just like last week, um, we want you to, to try this out with other things, like mix and match. Another thing that we suggested, like we want to think about this as more than just literally starting and ending, like starting at our ankles and ending at the balls of our feet. Um, so we can involve our whole body in bad, bad whiskey or something. Um, we can also move around. We can move around in a circle. We can move around forwards and backwards. So we want to like use the full flexibility of our 3D environment. Are you still talking about solo movement? Uh, solo movement, but it also translates into when we're dancing with a partner. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I recommended trying as like an exercise and that it's really good in partner dancing is trying to uh, be able to reproduce something that you do. So like let's say you're doing the bad, bad whiskey thing and you come up with a pattern that you really like, like bad, bad whiskey, whatever it is. Um, can you do it again? Bad, bad whiskey. Um, and can you like repeat it? Because one of the best ways that you can clue your partner into the fact that you're making like um, a musical choice that you might want their participation in, like in a call and response situation or something, is by being able to do the same thing again so that they notice, wait, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. Oh, I'm going to respond to that with my thing, etc. We talked about stomp offs. Um, we said that if we're doing our bad, bad whiskey thing and we go like bad, bad whiskey, but uh, we might use a stomp off to come back together after a pause. And then at the end of um, some songs, like Bad Bad Whiskey and Wade in the Water, have uh, three eights that are very similar, like Bad Bad Whiskey, Bad Bad Whiskey, Bad Bad Whiskey. And then they have something else, like something about his happy home. Um, and so we might do a like break step, we'll call it, um, as our like fourth eight before we go back to it. It's another way of getting on the same page um, and of just acknowledging like the shift in the music. They didn't do the same thing again. Um, they did more of a wrap up. So we're going to wrap up what we're doing. 
Oh, I just want to review the stomp off footwork because that was new to some people. So two different ways of doing it. We can start with our first foot, leaders left, followers right, and go step, step, rock, step. And we said the rhythm is just the last two thirds of a triple step. It's the pull step. So it's stomp off, rock, step. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be to start with your second foot, leaders right, followers left, and go step, tap. It would look like step, tap, rock, step. So it depends on which foot you have free. Um, they're both valid ways of doing it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's it. That's that. See you next week.